All right, five tips to increase ACT scores. Look, the biggest enemy students have on the ACT is called carelessness. We gotta mitigate carelessness. We do that by quick checking. That's right, when you fill in a bubble, let's say it's D for answer choice number two, everyone else is gonna go to number three. Take a moment and quick check it. Confirm its veracity. Make sure it is accurate. And you have strategies for that. In English, just reread the sentence, plug in the answer, make sure it sounds right. In math, redo the math in your head with a calculator. In reading, reread the question, reread the answer. In science, reread the question, reread the answer, and look back one more time at the chart. But you want to quick check three to eight seconds to confirm you answered correctly, and that will minimize careless errors. I mean, 16, 17s on the ACT don't reflect ability, right? They reflect a lot of carelessness sabotaging that score. You want to minimize that carelessness by quick checking your answer, three to eight seconds. Second thing is on the ACT, if you do not fill in a single bubble, it will be judged wrong. So we always want to fill in one bubble per question. So if we're running out of time, we always want to guess. So if there's 15 seconds left in a section, what time is it? Bubble time. Pick your favorite letter. Straight line those bubbles. We got to straight line those bubbles so we get one bubble filled before time is up. Now a great tip for English. Less is more. This is great for life, by the way, but certainly for English. The fewer words, the better. If it's three words versus three words, in other words, you have two answer choices of equal length, three words versus three words, they're of equal length. I don't care how many letters there are in each word. But if it's three words versus two words, two words is clearly shorter. And I'm not saying two words is right. I'm saying it's probably right. Less is more. And that's true for life, right? Because the fewer words, the more clear it is. If you're asking directions, let's pretend this is a 1990s hypothetical. You're asking directions, you don't have GPS, you don't have any maps technology, and you're asking directions and someone says, I'll give you the directions in 70 words or 17, what are you gonna choose? 17. Less is more. The shortest answer is no is right, but it's usually right. There's only one reason the shortest answer is not correct in English. It's horrible. I mean like me speak badly. Horrible. Less is more. A great tip for math, and this is our fourth tip, is put down what you know. Which translated means show your work formulas first. Show your work formulas first. So often, students will start doing it in their head or start pounding calculator keys. You might be punching the wrong numbers into the right equation, the right numbers into the wrong equation, the wrong numbers in the wrong way. You gotta make sure you got the right numbers in the right equation. First thing you do is the moment they give you anything, you put it down. Area of a circle is 14. Boom, pi r squared equals 14. And then work until you hit a dead end. And only when you cannot do anything further. Keep reading the question. Less is more is a great English strategy. Pudwick, put down what you know, show your work formulas first, is a fabulous math strategy. I show my work on number one, on number two. Not just the late questions, which are a little harder, but like on number seven, I show my work to make sure it's right. This test is not so much about genius. It is about precision. And show your work formulas first, quick check, boom. That mitigates carelessness and augments precision. And our fifth tip has to do with science, which scares a lot of students. In part because it's the last section, and so students are thinking, whoa, I'm tired, I want to get out of here, I'm struggling, and their focus wanes. But also the name, right, science, I mean, science can be intimidating. A lot of students are like, ah, oh, science, nightmare. Well, you go into anything with that kind of attitude, you're going to be a prophet. We got to make sure that students realize that science largely in name only. The section should be called data interpretation. Who can read charts, tables, and graphs? Who can interpret data? So it's data interpretation. And the great thing about data interpretation is that very few high school students have much background in reading charts, tables, and graphs. So in very short order, with good, precise, solid strategies, you can get really good at this new skill, this acquired skill. And scores can take off in science pretty doggone quickly. So it's science largely in name only. It's about your ability to read charts, tables, and graphs. And that largely has to do with your ability to interpret them and understand their headings and their axes, their headings, their ax vertical axis, horizontal axis, and then articulate in your mind what's actually happening in that chart. So quick check to minimize carelessness. Bubble time to make sure you get one bubble filled before time is up. In English, less is more. I'm not saying the shortest is always right. I'm saying it's usually right. There's only one reason not to go with the shortest. It's gotta be bad, me speak bad. And number four is a math strategy. Show your work. In life, show your work. Before you start doing anything else or working in your head, show your work formulas first. 
Make sure you got the right formula down. Make sure you're plugging numbers in correctly. That will add to precision. And then in science, that's a misnomer. It's really data interpretation. Sure, there are a couple questions out of 40, maybe five or six that science studs have an advantage on. The vast majority of those questions are who can read the pictures, charts, tables, and graphs. And I love reading pictures. I mean, Go Dog Go is one of my favorite books. Reading pictures, we can get good at that. Five tips to help you jump those scores.